Our story begins in a wealthy suburb just outside of Memphis, Tennessee. Deborah Marion makes a phone call that no parent ever wants to make. The call is to the Collierville Police Department. She is reporting her son missing. She identifies herself as the mother of famed NBA star Lorenzen Wright. The name is well known to the officers and most others in Memphis. Lorenzen Wright was considered a hometown hero. Deborah tells the officers that 34-year-old Lorenzen, who currently lives in Atlanta, Georgia, arrived in Memphis four days earlier to visit, but has now disappeared. Lorenzen's sister was having a baby shower, but Lorenzen did not show up. No one could get in contact with Lorenzen. It was as if he had fallen off the face of the earth. The family knew something was wrong as he would regularly contact them. Deborah filed a missing person report. News of the missing NBA players spread quickly across the state. Lorenzen Wright was born on November 4, 1975 in Oxford, Mississippi. Lorenzen had a strong bond with his mother and father even though his parents were separated. Lorenzen's relationship with his father, a former NBA prospect, centered around their shared love of basketball. His father, Herbert Wright, was injured and paralyzed but that did not stop him. Lorenzen's father was his first coach. By the time Lorenzen was in high school, it was clear that the 6'11 teenager was a gifted athlete. He was one of the best players in Mississippi. His dad made the decision to move Lorenzen from Mississippi to Memphis, as he would attract much more attention there. Lorenzen climbed through the ranks. He garnered a lot of attention from his coach as well as the coach's daughter, Shara Robinson. Lorenzen became madly in love with her. In 1994, Lorenzen began his freshman year playing for the University of Memphis. That same year, Shara became pregnant with his child. The couple was excited but decided to hold off on marriage so Lorenzen could focus on basketball. A year later, while still playing at the University of Memphis, all of Lorenzen's dedication and hard work paid off. It was NBA draft night. Select Lorenzen Wright from the University of Memphis. Lorenzen was drafted by the LA Clippers as a seventh player selected in the 1996 NBA draft. His life was changed overnight. Lorenzen was now on the road for 42 games a season. However, he was always eager to return home to Shara and his son. By 1998, the couple had married and Lorenzen had built a reputation in the NBA and a hefty bank account. In 1999, Shara gave birth to their second child. Their marriage remained strong even after the family moved to Atlanta after Lorenzen was traded to the Hawks. In 2001, Lorenzen's dream came true. He was traded to the Memphis Grizzlies the city where his career began. Lorenzen and Shara moved their family to the wealthy Memphis suburb of Collierville. As the years went by, their family continued to grow. By 2002, they had seven children, three girls and four boys. Shara was always there for the kids. She was regarded as a great mother. By 2003, Lorenzen and Shara were living a fantasy. That is, until tragedy struck as their youngest daughter died of SIDS at 11 months old. Shara was heartbroken and Lorenzen was devastated. This was the pivot point in their marriage. Arguments between the two were of plenty. Over the next few years, the relationship soured, but they tried their best to stick it out. In 2006, Lorenzen was traded for the final time, back to the Atlanta Hawks. However, less than three years later, he was cut and wouldn't play again. By then, it was clear that both his career and marriage were in trouble. Shara moved back to Memphis, and Lorenzen stayed in Atlanta. This is where they started to drift apart. He would travel back and forth to Memphis to visit the kids, but in 2010, the couple finally divorced. On July 22nd, just days after returning to Memphis to visit his family, Lorenzen was missing. His family said that he had an amical relationship with his ex-wife and planned to stay with her and their kids while he was in Memphis. When the family contacted Shara, she did not appear overly concerned. She said that there was nothing to worry about and she was sure that he would come back soon. This wasn't completely out of the norm for Lorenzen. He was known for sometimes going under the radar for a day or two. Only this time he had not been heard from in four days. It was clear something was terribly wrong. Memphis investigators began their search for Lorenzen by tracking down his last known whereabouts on the night of July 18th, 2010. Family members told police that earlier that day, Lorenzen was with his college friend Phil Dotson. Dotson, a lifelong friend of Lorenzen, was interviewed. Dotson said that they had had dinner with a bunch of their fraternity brothers that night. Dotson then took Lorenzen to the gym where they watched Lorenzen's son play a game of pickup basketball. Their time together was interrupted by a constant stream of texts, all from Shara Wright. She was sending Lorenzen sexually explicit text messages. Eventually, he took Lorenzen and his son to Shara's house at around 10 p.m., and that was the last time he heard from Lorenzen. Since Lorenzen was last seen at Shara's home, investigators speak with her next. Shara corroborates Phil's story and tells detectives that she last saw Lorenzen after he returned to the house with their son. After spending some time together, Lorenzen made some comments about having a box of drugs. Shara claims around 10.30 that night, two armed Hispanic men whom she'd never seen before showed up to pick up Lorenzen. She said that he had left with them. After interviewing Shara, detectives speak with friends of Lorenzen. It becomes clear that both Shara and Lorenzen were having extramarital affairs while they were together. The infidelity was nothing compared to the financial shock that came when Lorenzen was cut from the Hawks. 
He made $55 million playing basketball, but by the time he was done, all of it was gone. When the divorce became final, they seemed to instantly regret it. That's why Lorenzen came back. Lorenzen was trying to get back with Shara. Did his financial troubles lead him to get in with the wrong crowd? Detectives must verify Shara's story and identify the two men he left with. They subpoena his phone records. While detectives wait for the location data, they are able to see the last call made from Lorenzen's phone. They realize that the last call he made that night was at 12.12 a.m. The call was to 911. On July 27th, detectives obtain a recording of the 911 call from the neighboring town of Germantown. What they hear is terrifying. Georgetown 911, where is your emergency? Hello? 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 The call had not been followed up on. The cell tower sat in the middle of three jurisdictions, so when Germantown checked the location of the call, they saw that it was not in their jurisdiction, so they just dropped it. More than a week after the 911 call, Collierville detectives got the phone location they had been waiting for. The 911 call was made in a suburb of Memphis. The name of the street was Callis Cutoff Road. With a full forensic team and canines, investigators went to the location. They began a very exhaustive search. After going over a barbed wire fence and walking through a field up a small hill by some bushes, they find Lorenzen's body. The body had decomposed for nine days in the Memphis weather in July. He was nothing but bones. The body was unrecognizable as a person except for the bright white tennis shoes that remained. Between the shoes, jewelry, and clothing, detectives were all but certain that the body belonged to Lorenzen. As the medical examiner collects the remains, the investigators comb through the area looking for evidence. Numerous searches were done, however, Lorenzen's cell phone was never found. They did find bullet casings of two different calibers, 25 and 9mm. It was more than likely that there were two perpetrators as the two calibers could not be shot from the same weapon. Detectives believe that this wasn't a random attack. He still had his watch on, diamond earrings, and a chain. The news of a body being found spread like wildfire. Lorenzen's mom, Deborah, arrived on the scene. She began pacing around, waiting for any news. Detectives notify her that based on what they found, the body was most likely that of her son. A day later, through dental records, the medical examiner confirmed that the body was that of Lorenzen Wright. He had been shot five times. He was shot in the head and in the chest. Investigators follow up on Shara's claims of him leaving the house with drugs and two mystery men. After speaking with more of Lorenzen's family members, they said that even if Lorenzen spent all of his money, Shara would have helped him out. Shara would often brag that her clothes were worth more than some people's cars. It was her style. She loved to spend money. Family members said that even if Lorenzen was having money problems, he would have never gotten involved with drugs. With this information, detectives begin to question her story. As they press her on the details, Shara lawyers up. Detectives subpoena her phone records. They go through her text messages to Lorenzen in the days leading up to his murder. In the days prior, Shara sent multiple messages in what could be described as a campaign to convince him to come to Memphis. She sent him explicit text messages, you know, come and get some of this action, baby. Was she really that interested in seeing him, or was she luring him in for a trap? While going through Shara's texts, they discover messages between her and two men, Billy Turner and Jimmy Martin. Shara exchanged a series of suspicious messages with Jimmy that appeared to be coded. Investigators discover that Jimmy Martin was Shara's cousin and that he was currently out on bail awaiting trial for second-degree murder. He had been charged with the murder of his girlfriend. And asking around about the other man, Billy Turner, detectives learned that he was Shara's landscaper. When pulling location data from all three, Billy's phone had been overlapping the same cell tower used by Lorenzen's 911 call shortly after the murder. Detectives reach out to both Billy and Jimmy, and unsurprisingly they both deny any involvement. The case begins to reach a dead end as investigators run out of leads. However, Lorenzen's mother, Deborah, would not let the case go cold. She called detectives every day and told them that she would not leave them alone until she gets justice for her son. Shara seemed to be on a slightly different path. After receiving the life insurance money from the death of Lorenzen, she went on a spending spree. She spent nearly $1 million in 10 months. This was brought up in a court case as Lorenzen's father was suing Shara to prevent her from spending all of it. She went on expensive trips, bought houses, and more of those car priced clothes. Two years pass and it looks like Lorenzen's murder will remain unsolved. Then in 2012, Jimmy Martin's murder case wrapped up. Jimmy was convicted and at that point, he came forward. He was trying to work out a deal for information on the murder of Lorenzen. Jimmy told the police about a meeting with Shara Wright and Billy Turner at Shara's house. The meeting was about a plot to kill Lorenzen. Jimmy claimed that when they put the plan in motion, he was left out. He said that he was supposed to be there that night, but they never picked him up. After midnight, he was called by Billy who told him that he and Shara needed his help. Billy told him that Lorenzen was already dead. 
but during the attack, Shara had panicked and left a 25 caliber pistol at the scene on Callus Cutoff Road. They went back to the scene and used a metal detector to find the gun. After finding the gun, Shara left with it while he and Billy were tasked with disposing of the 9mm. He said that he and Billy threw the weapon in a nearby lake. Detectives headed to the lake with Jimmy Martin. A rainy day left the water murky and muddy. The team at the bottom of the lake was unable to recover a gun. This ultimately led the original investigators to dismiss Jimmy's story. Many years go by. Shara moved to Riverside, California and got remarried twice. Meanwhile, Lorenzen's mother, Deborah, refused to let the case die. She continued to call the police department. In 2017, the case was reopened. The case, now called Operation Rebound, was investigated by a culmination of agents from the ATF and FBI, along with a new team from local police departments. On June 27, 2017, an FBI dive team was brought to the lake. They scoured the bottom of the lake and within an hour they found a gun. Detectives sent the 9mm gun for ballistics testing. The results came in a month later. The shell casings from a test firing of the recovered 9mm were compared to the ones left at the crime scene. They were a match. The new team of investigators wasn't done yet. They knew that they would need more evidence before they could charge anyone. They decided to wiretap Shara's and Billy's phones. On November 9th, 2017, Memphis police announced the discovery of the gun. The media latched onto the story. Shara found out soon after as evidenced by her phone activity. Shara was heard saying, somebody done told somebody about something. One hell of a statement. Believing that the police might be onto her, she didn't have any confessional conversations while on the phone. Detectives are also able to see the internet searches made on Shara's phone. She searched for how long do fingerprints last on a gun underwater. She also made a search for the name Billy Turner. Within days, Shara takes the flight back to Memphis. As soon as she lands, detectives follow her. She is seen using a third party's phone to call Billy Turner and set up a meeting with him. Detectives were able to surveil the meetup location. During their meeting, Billy looked over his shoulder multiple times during the 30-minute conversation. On December 5, 2017, investigators obtained a search warrant for Billy Turner's residence. They found multiple weapons. Billy was a convicted felon, so he was not allowed to have any of those weapons. So Billy was arrested. When being questioned, Billy only admitted to being more than just friends with Shara. After that, he stopped talking. A few days later, U.S. Marshals arrested Shara in California. Shara said nothing. Billy Turner, Shara's lover at the time, was nothing more than a pawn on a chessboard that did exactly what his queen wanted him to do. Prosecutors believe that Shara lured Lorenzen to Memphis with promises of sex and reconciliation. Around midnight, they took a ride to Callis Cutoff, a spot they went to multiple times during their relationship to have deep conversations. When they arrived, Billy Turner was waiting, gun in hand. Shara was armed as well. They both fired shots while Lorenzen was on the road. Lorenzen jumped over the barbed wire fence as bullets flew by. Billy chased him down the street and over the fence. Lorenzen ducked into nearby bushes to call 911. When he was on the phone with 911, Billy saw the light emitting from Lorenzen's phone. Billy fired multiple shots and executed Lorenzen. As they were preparing for trial, prosecutors were approached by Shara's lawyers about a plea deal. On July 25, 2019, Shara pled guilty to facilitation of first-degree murder. He was sentenced to 30 years. She will be eligible for parole in 2027. Billy Turner wanted to press his luck at trial. He was convicted of first-degree murder and sentenced to life in prison. 